And before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of the day's top stories. Action Aid International and partners have rolled out another training program for farmers, headsmen, and butchers on the highly contagious bovine pleuropneumonia or CBPP. Youth volunteers in the Central River region have donated vital blood supplies to the Bansang Hospital, meant to strengthen the facility's emergency response system. Desperate survivors of Typhoon Haiyan are picking up the pieces of their shattered lives a week after rainstorm flattened parts of the country. And authorities have begun the grim tax of burying the dead, I mean looming humanitarian catastrophe, particularly in the hard-hit areas. That was all in this edition of the news. From me, Winifred Nicole, and the team, thanks for your time and stick with GRTS. To start with, um, it's the breaking story that everyone is talking about now, and uh, it's regarding the Commonwealth and the decision that the announcement that was made yesterday. Could you explain what has been the reason behind the big announcement and why now? First of all, I want to welcome you to the Gambia. And uh, we are very proud when we see African magazines being published by Africans. I know this is not a new magazine. I've, I've been reading it since I was going to school. <laughs> it used to be African now, West Africa, a new African. Uh, oh, for six years. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've come a long way because you see that Africa now has disappeared. And, uh, but, yes. So the breaking news, it's not supposed to be breaking news because uh, we want to be very independent of anything, anything that has a vestige of colonialism, especially where uh, the same old story goes. One person decides and that's it. And uh, we believe that uh, we, are, we, better, we are better off being o our own than joining institutions that do not want to listen to you. They tell you do what we want and not what you want to do. So uh, after 48 years of independence, we have enough of Britain. We, are, we, are, we have enough of colonialism. It's not taking us anywhere but backwards. And we want to be free to be able to uh, be ourselves. Because remember that uh, our this year's independence celebration theme is uh, live according to your religion and your culture. And so uh, Commonwealth is not a religion, it's not a culture. We want to make sure that we remain Gambian and true and independent of all institutions that have anything to do with uh, colonialism. Uh, so this is the reason we decided to quit. And uh, people are saying that uh, I'm even surprised that people think that you should have a problem with somebody before you leave the person. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't have to have a, if I have a problem with somebody, I solve the problem with you. But what I'm saying is the Commonwealth is, uh, is a, a, a neo-colonialist institution and we are not going to subscribe to that anymore. It's not only the Commonwealth, but any institution or organization that has that uh, legacy or that is representation of 
the uh, colonial era, we're not going to be part of it because colonialism brought us nothing but poverty and uh, backwardness and exploitation and slavery. In fact, also, we cannot today uh, continue to be associated with a country that was responsible for slavery in the first place. And uh, nobody, uh, the Jews have been compensated. Other people have been compensated. We do not even have an apology from the, uh, Great Britain, which, was, which orchestrated slavery in the first place, and then colonialism. Colonialism and slavery came together. We were not human beings. The idea of human rights, uh, human uh, good governance, freedom, and elections never apply to the colonial subjects. I used to tease him and say he's the youngest man, the Minister of Information. Mm -hmm. And I used to ask him, when was the first and last time you participated in elections during colonial era? Mm -hmm. To the extent that Gambians were never trained to be scientists or doctors. And I believe that there has not been any co country in Africa where during the colonial era they, they trained indigenous people to become either doctors or scientists. Why do, you, why do you reckon there's this backlash then uh, uh, against such, if you explain it in such a way that you have explained it? Do you think it's a way of still trying to hold back the advancement of Africa? And in your view, do you think your decision to do that today is something that should be taken up by other African governments in the Commonwealth? Well, uh, yeah, journalists. You've traveled the world. Now, can you tell me one African country that is well developed today, com that can be compared to Dubai or any Middle Eastern country, thanks to the West, or thanks to a former colonial master? And what I'm saying is, if you follow, you can never lead. We Africans have been following and following, and that's why we are always backwards. It is high time that we stop following and be on our own. That's my message to Africa. Now, uh, Africa is the richest continent in terms of mineral resources. But the poorest of the poor, the wretched of the earth, live in Africa. And, in fact, most of them are found in countries that are ex exporting in large quantities valuable resources. I won't name those countries. How is it possible that uh, uh, a relationship where one is becoming richer all the time and one is becoming poorer? The, po the one becoming poorer will be very intelligent by half to follow the one who is enriching himself at the detriment of the one impoverished, being impoverished. The relationship has not benefited any African country. Any relationship with, the, not only the West, but any, our, most of the outside forces from Europe is a relationship that only benefited the Europeans and not Africans. Now, who are the Europeans by, color, by the color of their skin that they should always teach Africans what to do? From colonialism to now, they, they, are, they think that they are the gods of Africa, that they should tell us what we should do. And Gambia is saying no to that. So if you realize that if you don't dance to their tune, they call you a dictator. Yes. <laughs> Elections will never be fair unless they are spon the opposition they sponsored wins the election, then the elections are free and fair. But then they, they impose this idea of term, li term limit. And in most European countries, members of the Western Bloc, there is no term limit. Okay, well, but also, they have monarchies in almost all the, all the European countries. Well, that's normal. Oh, that's royalty. And uh, a member of the royal family can go on a honeymoon that, that can build 10,000 schools in Africa. That's normal. But an African who becomes a, who is a monarch say, oh, this is the same to Africa. It's a, an absolute monarch. 